All right, so I got this truck probably a month ago. Um, it's an 03 Dodge 3500, dually with the 5.9 Cummins diesel engine in it. I got it pretty cheap because the engine is seized. So I'm not exactly sure why it's seized, which is what I'm going to try to figure out. So I'm going to go with it's going to need a rebuild of some sort. Um, but right now I just need to figure out what I have to work with because I mean I don't I don't want to buy an engine with you know, 300,000 miles on it for $4,000 or whatever ridiculous price these people want for these things. So, I mean, a rebuild kit's about a thousand bucks. Um, machine work would probably be about a thousand bucks, and then I could have pretty much a new engine for a couple grand. And I'll just do the work myself. I mean, obviously, except for the machining. But like I said, I don't even know why it's seized. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to do is take the manifold off. I mean, I'm looking in here, I don't see. I don't see any uh I don't see any valves that are like way high or anything. Everything's kinda in there. So there's I don't think I lost a valve. I put a boroscope down in there. I couldn't really see much. Um the guy who owned it put a uh, hundred horse injectors in it. And it looks like he's got a stock turbo and he probably melted a piston or something of that nature. I'm hoping it's really just not a big deal, but I mean, we'll obviously see what it's going to need. So, I wasn't really gonna do this today, but I figured I didn't get a whole ton of anything else to do and I'm already dirty, so. Twist it off. There we go. Do is break it, and then it comes off. Look at that. I was gonna try to take the turbo off first, but you know, that looks like it's gonna be a pain. So I figured I'd just start with this. Yeah, so these two are studs. That's a stud. That's a stud. Or, I mean, it's not really a stud. It's just got a threaded, threaded stud sticking out. And all the rest are nuts. See? Well, well that one's a stud too, but that's got a bracket on it. I was going to take a picture of it, but why take a picture when I got a video? So. You know, maybe I'll just take a picture anyway. it would be easier than watching the video. Not that it's that big of a deal, but, you know, I'm kinda, kinda anal about the stuff.
so it is that. Initially, you know, I figured, because I paid 3000 for it. It's complete, it's a manual, a six speed. Um, I figured just the transmission package alone would cost me a couple thousand anyway. So, I mean, I can get my money out of it. It's just. I think I'd rather fix it. They initially tried to find a manual because my other truck's a diesel too. So I, I tried to find a manual long bed and they were like very difficult to find. I think every time I I went to go look at like three of them and they were gone like immediately. So it's hard, it's hard to find them also, especially in good condition. I mean, this is one. It, it's this one's pretty rough, but you know, I got I got the parts to repair it. I'm gonna have it all apart anyway. So need some work on the bed, the tailgate, things like that. But you can get a tailgate off of eBay for 150 bucks. So it's not like it's a big deal. I'll just paint it and stick it on. I got a I got a bed from somebody that I can get the take the bedside off and put the bedside on this. So, shouldn't be that big of a deal, you know, it's kind of a project. If nothing else, I can part it out. But, yeah, it's pre-emissions, so. It's gonna be kind of a puzzle to put back together because that guy bought it from took most of it apart. I guess he was gonna rebuild it himself, but he just didn't have the time, so we let it sit for a couple of years. So, guess everything's all parts are all over the place. They figure out where they all go. understand is why they put these collars on these bolts like this. And they're there for heat. Heating and heating and cooling or something or the I'm not exactly sure. I guess it doesn't really matter. It is what it is. At least they come right off. I mean, maybe that's why they put them on. They can take it right off. I don't know. I was a little nervous. They weren't going to come off. Most of the time, you got to heat heat exhaust manifold bolts.
So I got another video that I'm working on. It's uh, a truck at work with a broken bell housing, so. I don't know which one will go up first, either that one or this one, but if you're interested in things like that, then there'll be a video about that. Also. These, uh, these bolts are 13 millimeter, in case I hadn't said anything. So anyway, so the guy I got this from, I guess he, he put 100 horsepower injectors on it, and he's got probably a tuner on it, and he's got that being Bully dog, six gun, whamma lamma ding dong controller in there. And uh, being that he's got the stock turbo, I'm willing to bet that he just kind of melted a piston because he got it so hot putting so much fuel into it. Because everybody wants to roll coal. I'm not a roll coal kind of guy, I'm more of a, you know, have a durable truck that you can drive kind of guy. I mean, I don't need big power. I just need it to run and get me where I'm going. so I can get that tube off. Alright. So I got that hose off and has some green coolant coming out which isn't really the correct coolant that I believe is supposed to go in here. Uh, or maybe it is. Uh, I don't I don't think it is quite honestly. I'm pretty sure it's uh it's Xerox G05 and I don't think it's green. And that's what I put on my other one. Oh, this one ain't gonna run out. Oh, there we go. Had to put a little extra handle on it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I gotta imagine, I hear that high power diesel trucks are great. And they probably are. I mean, you're talking, what is it, a $6,000 engine, six $8,000? And it's blown up. I mean, this guy had it six months. And he blew it up. It's like, there you go. I mean, the truck itself, he probably spent, I don't know, 20 grand on it, maybe? I don't know what he spent on it. But it's like, he sold it to me for three. It's like, there's no way he made his money out of this. And then, I mean, he paid... Three thousand dollars for the injectors that he put into it. It's like, yeah, that was a, that was a cool six months you had there, wasn't it? And it's just like, no, if that's what you want to do with your money, that's fine. But 
I'd rather have a truck that's just dependable, runs, drives, gets you where you're going. But I mean, everybody does different things. I'm more of a work truck person, I guess, than a show truck person. I mean, I want it to look good. I don't want it to look bad, but it's just, it's just one of those things. I mean, I don't want to ruin it. So you can go roll coal somewhere. Whatever you want to do. Draw attention to yourself. Come on. What is that? I guess next thing is going to be taking this off. I tried to, I tried to turn it over by hand, or actually not, well, yeah, by hand, but I, I had a pipe wrench on the, on the balancer, kind of on sideways, and I was trying to turn it, and it wasn't having it, so, uh, so I'm pulling the head off, because, if it's got to be rebuilt, the head's got to come off anyway. So I figure it's next step. Take off the head. Uh, and it's right up here on top, so. Let's see. These are 10 millimeters. So, those rockers are not there, so, yeah. One, ah, 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 two, three, four, Probably should have got a short socket. Six. There you go. Seven of them. So, as a long time ago, I used to own a, a Bronco too. Uh, I think I was 18. 18 19 I, I think I bought it when I was 17 but and the the Ford 2.9 liter engine in it and it wasn't a very good engine it's kind of like a disposable engine and uh I'll continue my story in a minute all right so to continue so I had uh I had one of those Bronco 2s with a 2.9 liter engine in it. And I, uh, I was taking the second engine out because the, uh, it spun the bearings in it. Which I guess is pretty common for those. Uh, so I was down, down in an area that they, I didn't have any water or anything. So, and I, uh, I was cutting the manifold bolts because I, I couldn't get them off. Because like normal, they're just, holy crap, it's tight. They're just kind of seized on there. So I uh, 
I cut the bolts and I ended up, I had taken the intake and stuff off first. And uh, after I cut them, I accidentally set the side of the engine on fire because there was an oil leak all over the place. So I'm down there trying to get the engine out with a big fire just starting to roar. It's like obviously a real, real issue. And uh, so I, I had to throw a bunch of dirt on there to put it out. I basically loaded the intake with dirt because that was the only way I could put it out. That's all I had. I ended up getting it out. I mean, I was rebuilding it anyway. But uh, I figured it was kind of a comical story. That's not the right size. I'm going to bet it's going to be one I don't have with me. This little ball end is not as strong. I just want to take some of the pressure off of off of the, uh, the rods, not the rods, but the uh, pressure rods. So when I loosen that nut up, I don't screw it up. Ended up rebuilding that engine, and then I, I reused the uh, oil pressure sensor, and I didn't notice it was leaking. When I first started it up, it was, I mean, the light was on, and I, I didn't have any problems. I, I looked at it, and it was just a bad sensor. I think it was the sensor that was on the engine. I didn't reuse the one that came with it. I just left it on the engine. So the light was on when I first started it. And I didn't notice that it was leaking because it wasn't hitting anything. It was, it was dropping straight down and it wasn't actually dripping on anything. So I was never able to see it. And then it started knocking. And I don't think it started knocking for for a couple of days, it leaked all its oil out. So there I was thinking that it wasn't leaking, and it was just a bad sensor. And then all of a sudden, here it goes, engine's bad. I think I, I just rebuilt that one. But I mean, you learn as you go. That was that was the first engine I rebuilt, and I think I was 18, 18 or 19 when I did it. I think I was eight. I must have been 18. I might even have been 17. I think I was still in school. So I think I was 17. But it's just one of the things you learn. Hey, don't be an idiot. I mean, I didn't go crazy. I just, it wasn't like I had anything machined or anything. I was just younger. I really didn't care. I mean, I guess you don't have to machine everything every time. It just, I took the engine out because I was replacing the one I had because it had uh, the rods were knocking just because those engines kind of suck so so I mean I was rebuilding the other one thinking because it was a separate vehicle I just bought a second vehicle for the motor and I took it out to rebuild it and that's what I did I ended up driving it around like that for you know, probably like a year. One thing I'll say about them Fords is they'll run without oil pressure. I don't really have to worry. I mean, I, I drove all over the place with that. I put, I put thousands of miles on it. I 
ended up changing the engine again later on. I didn't rebuild it, I just swapped one in out of an S10. That's back when you can buy an engine for a couple hundred bucks or 500 bucks. I think I paid four for it. And now you can't get one for freaking less than 3,000 or something ridiculous. It's like you can almost buy new ones for the same price of used ones. Stick the gasket back in there. Put the gasket in and lose the bolts all at the same time. Man, this oil doesn't smell very good. It smells kind of like sulfur, like a cap gun. Remember like the cap guns when you pop the caps? That's kind of what the oil smells like. Yeah. Maybe it's that special seize your engine oil. Yes, I'm gonna go get a box. Just put some of the stuff in. So I don't lose it. And keep it from getting too dirty. Organized. So I'll probably get another socket for the head bolts. Try something on the SAE side. Why not that? That one fits not too tight. Yeah, they're probably 18 because I mean 11 sixteenths is a little too tight, so we're gonna go with 18.
All right, well, I couldn't find a box, but I did find a tray. So, what a tray. Which, I don't think this tray is going to be big enough. One. Two. Get a minute to tell you that. I guess I could have put it next to it, but I want to put the rock arms in here too. Hopefully they're all the same. Imagine they are. Oh, are you kidding me? supposed to get them out. Huh. Well, I guess there's some trick to that. Let me put these here so they can fall on the ground. Because that's the way it happens. I can't imagine that you need to we can pull the head off to get the rods out. There's got to be a way to get them out. Huh. I don't know if you're supposed to rock the, the head over. Well, I guess that's something to remember. I'll have to look it up. I'm sure they probably come out somehow. This is a hole. There's a knockout or a hole or something up there you gotta lean into. I feel like there's a plug right there. I bet there's a. I bet you go up into that plug. That's got to be it. One there. And there's another one there. Yeah, you probably you probably supposed to put it into that plug. Oh. Uh, well. Yeah, but I don't feel like pulling it out right now. So, I'll get them later. Well, maybe I will. I don't know. No, I'm just, I'm going to leave that for now because I don't want to open up any holes into the cab that some mouse is going to get into because I can, I can get them out. Uh, 
after I take the head off. I'll just pick the head up on this side and slide them out. And then um, I'll make sure I'll just have to put them in the right way. This must be part of that little plastic tab that was missing from the valve. The uh, not the valve, but that little uh, that thing that pushes down on the bridge. Okay, so the way I like to do this is I start in kind of the reverse order. I don't know what the torque it where the torque this one, but I know. On like an international you do like one two and three four you just you go around in a circle on your way out so the way that I usually take them off is I'll do a quarter turn to relieve the pressure and I'll just do the opposite all the way back in I won't loosen the bolt up all the way and granted that might not make a big difference because it's not hot I know it'll make a difference on a hot engine as opposed to a cooler engine but because you can, you can obviously warp ahead on a hot engine easier than on a cool engine, but it's just the way I like to do it, and I usually don't have many problems with it after I do it that way, so that's the way I'm gonna do it. Well, we'll do two baits. We don't take all the pressure off. I just find it's it helps. I'll end up fast forwarding in this for you. I mean, what do I got like 20 freaking bolts here? So we did the first row. Throw. One, two, three.
two, three, four, five, six. Seven. It's the last one. So I get seven plus six is thirteen rows of two, so you have twenty-six head studs. So that was basically you get another quarter and then you lose. So you like doing it in two stages. We are loose. I haven't exactly decided exactly what I want to do with this. Exactly, exactly. I don't know if I want to. I might make a little bit more of a durable build. Oh. So I got those big honking injectors. I don't know. I don't necessarily think I want to go crazy with them. I might put some different one, different nozzles on because they're the same bodies, but they're different tips. They flow different rates. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Part of the, the perk of getting the truck for the price I did is that I can Initially, I didn't think I could use the injectors for my truck, but then I find out that the, the bodies are the same And that's really what does a lot of the stuff the tip the the nozzles really aren't all that expensive So I could just buy another set of stock and stock nozzles and uh, Put them on those injectors and run them in my other truck because I mean, You said they were brand new But I guess you never know what you're getting I'm just hoping it didn't throw a rod or something and ruin something significant. I guess I could just buy a lower end. 
mean, I could do that. I could price out a rebuilt short block. And if it's the same price as getting the machine work done, I mean, why get the machine work done? But I guess on the same on the same thing, I don't really know how well they might have rebuilt it. They might have just thrown some rings on it and away you go. I don't know. I guess it's all about what it costs, right? All right. Took you over the top. You still on? Yep. So, yeah. over here, look, here's the injector bores. I mean, as you can see, I only had to take off the uh, the intake side because the when the guy took the injectors out, he had to take off the exhaust side. So there's all our all our valves, manifolds off. So it's just kind of hanging, hanging on the exhaust. Um. Probably not gonna pull this out right now. I'm going to go inside. This is probably like 6:30, 7 o'clock, and I've been working all day. And then doing this after I was done, so. Yep. Thanks for watching.